Steam Exchanger. This module introduces the Steam Exchanger and its critical role in surface well testing. It covers the applications of Steam Exchangers, including hydrate prevention, viscosity reduction, emulsion breaking, foam reduction, and increased burner efficiency. The module details the features of Steam Exchangers, their principle of operation, selection guidelines, and operation and safety guidelines, ensuring safe and efficient thermal management during well testing operations. Steam exchangers are used to raise the temperature of well effluent for a number of reasons. 1. Hydrate prevention. 2. Viscosity reduction. 3. Emulsion breaking. 4. Foam reduction. 5. Increased burner efficiency. Hydrate prevention. Water is often produced from a well in varying quantities and is often unavoidable and an inevitable consequence of production. Natural gases also contain a proportion of water vapor. Under certain choked flow conditions, the change of conditions across a choke is sufficient to lower the temperature such that the free water and light hydrocarbons in the natural gas become solid. Natural gas hydrates have the appearance of hard snow and they are formed above the normal freezing point of water. Certain gases, particularly H2S and CO2 promote the problem. Hydrates can become a serious problem by causing valves and flow meters to become inoperative and chokes to plug. A steam exchanger may alleviate this problem. Viscosity reduction. If an effluent has a high viscosity, the ease with which it will flow through a pipe is impaired. This is not normally a problem in well testing, but occasionally, combined with the effects of changes in composition as the reservoir fluid is brought to surface, the viscosity becomes very high and causes problems. As viscosity is temperature dependent, heating the well stream helps the flow characteristics. Emulsion breaking. With production of water from a reservoir, it is necessary to separate oil from water. Under certain conditions, the oil and water are miscible and will not separate unless the temperature of the effluent is raised. The three things necessary to cause an emulsion, two immiscible phases, agitation, and emulsifying agents, are commonly present in oil producing systems. Fine solids, carbonates, and sulfate compounds can react with certain crude oils to form surface films around the water droplets, which become very stable and difficult to break. Heat assists in the emulsion breaking process by increasing the temperature of the immiscible fluids, reducing the viscosity, deactivating the emulsifying agents, and allowing the dispersed droplets of water to collide. As the droplets collide, they grow in size and settle to the bottom. Foam reduction. The major cause of foam is impurities in crude oil that would be impractical to remove in a well testing situation. Foaming presents good separation and sometimes gives separator level regulation problems. The amount of foam is dependent on the pressure drop, and in some cases the temperature effect is quite spectacular. For this reason, foam suppression may result if the crude is heated. Increase burner efficiency. Typically, the higher the temperature of a fluid, the more efficiently it will burn. Features. Because steam heat exchangers drastically reduce risk, they are used on offshore platforms and in other work conditions where safety regulations do not permit the use of indirect fired heaters. The steam heat exchanger is a steam vessel with two coils through which the well fluid passes. A choke assembly between the coils enables the well to be controlled at the steam exchanger instead of at the choke manifold. An inlet manifold with three gate valves controls fluid flow and provides a way to bypass the coils and choke. To maintain a preset temperature, the steam flowing into the vessel is regulated by a steam control valve SCV on the steam inlet. A steam trap is mounted on the steam outlet line. The exchanger requires an adequate steam supply for operation. Some rigs have a sufficient steam supply, but usually a steam generator is required. The steam vessel is protected by a safety relief valve and a high pressure pilot connected to the emergency shutdown system. The steam exchanger is insulated on the outside with glass wool and is covered with an aluminum jacket. Principle of operations. 
The unit is skid mounted with a protective flame and consists of a steam vessel containing two coils through which the fluid passes. The choke assembly enables the well to be controlled at the heater rather than the choke manifold after the well fluid has passed through the first coil section. The inlet manifold of three gate valves controls fluid flow and provides a bypass of coils and choke. The steam flow into the vessel is regulated by an automatic control valve on the steam inlet to maintain a preset effluent outlet temperature. There is a steam trap on the steam outlet line. The steam vessel is protected by a safety valve with a flange, available for either an additional safety valve or a 6-inch bursting head. The steam vessel is insulated with glass wool and is covered with an aluminum jacket. Steam heat exchangers are required in certain geographical locations where regulations do not permit the use of indirect heaters. As there are no naked flames like in the indirect heater, the steam exchanger is intrinsically safe in terms of risk due to fire. Whenever the steam heat exchanger is anticipated, it is necessary to check the availability and characteristics of the steam supply. Most offshore rigs do not have sufficient steam generation capacity. Under these circumstances, it is required to supply a steam generator, which is usually rented from a specialist firm and located on a safe area on the rig. Steam heat exchangers generally have an output of 4.3 million BTU per hour and are available in 5K, 10K, and 15K PSI working pressure designs. Steam Trap the temperature controller system continuously monitors the difference between the effluent temperature leaving the steam heat exchanger and its set point. It produces an air signal that is a function of this difference, which is transmitted to a control valve. This control valve regulates the steam intake. The steam trap, or automatic bleeder, has two main functions. One, maintain the steam pressure inside the body of the steam heat exchanger in order to give the corresponding temperature. Two, eliminate water or condensed steam from the vessel without letting steam escape. Safety relief valve. The safety relief valves are installed on all pressurized vessels to protect the vessel from being pressurized above its working pressure. On the steam exchanger, there is one valve set to open when pressure exceeds working pressure. If the steam exchanger vessel pressure acting on the piston exceeds the spring force acting opposite way. The valve lifts from the seats and open. Equipment and Selection Guidelines Equipment The steam exchanger is available in 5K, 10K, and 15K PSI pressure ratings. There is also a heli-portable steam exchanger variant. Selection Guidelines A steam exchanger may be selected depending on pressure rating requirements, heating capacity, and safety regulations. Additional considerations. A steam generator is needed for the steam exchanger. Air supply is needed for the temperature controller of the steam exchanger. In some countries, a steam exchanger must be used because safety regulations prohibit the use of indirect heaters. The steam exchanger is intrinsically safe in terms of fire risk because it does not use a flame to heat the well effluent. Operation and safety guidelines. Do not touch the steam vessel with bare hands when the steam exchanger is working. After the job, flush the coils thoroughly with soft water and fill them with corrosion inhibitor before storing the steam exchanger. Never flow the well through the coils if a choke is not installed. Sand particles or corrosive fluids can erode the threads in the choke box. Do not use the adjustable choke to stop the flow. You can break the stem tip. Do not use the gate valves on the steam exchanger as chokes. Do not transport the steam exchanger when it is full of condensate water. The frame cannot support this extra weight. Before starting the steam exchanger, verify that the inlet and outlet valves for the coils are open. If the coils are filled with liquid and the valves are closed, the thermal expansion that results can generate enough pressure to burst the coils. Thanks so much for watching. That wraps up today's presentation. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us keep creating more content like this. See you in the next video.